Ella Panzini. When that red phone rings, I love it. What's your ETA? We'll see you in recess in 10 minutes. Adrenaline, anticipation, all those thoughts and feelings come in your head. Paramedics have a patient rescued from remote countryside with a seriously fractured knee. At 79 years old, Jeffrey is rushed straight to Rhesus. Does your wife know what's happening? Yes. Does she want to come in? No, she'll, she'll be looking after the dog. Oh. <laughs> she'll kill me. Who's going to be in bad mood? She'll be able to kill me. Paramedics. Analgesia wise, what's he had? A gram of paracetamol yeah. um, at 9.28 and 2.5 milligrams of morphine at 10.30. 10.30, okay. I've still got it here. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. Put your mouth around it, yeah? And then you put your finger on the top of there and just suck. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that's strong stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be singing to us shortly. Right, so what happened, Jeffrey? I was walking my dog okay. and he pulled me over. What happened after that? My leg were up here and I thought, that's not good. People from Yorkshire in general are made of tough stuff and especially the older generation you find coming in with their pain or their problems far later than I would expect you to. The ambulance came and carried me out of this field. It was yeah. muddy. You know, the, uh, the ambulance crew got muddy feet yeah. <laughs> and they were frozen. They're marvellous, aren't they? Absolutely marvellous. Cool, I can smell that. I'm starting to feel very relaxed as well. Yeah. Can we bob this in your nose? Just bob that away for me for one second. We'll do it this way so it's out of the way. After initial assessment in Resus Bay 2, orthopaedic practitioner Sean Coles has been summoned to help treat Jeffrey's fractured knee. I didn't realise it was really. Jeffrey what been doing. And the patient is an old friend. He just pulled me over. I got it, I got it wrong. <laughs> just for a moment, no chatting, a few deep breaths for me. How's wrong? Wrong? Too. No, wrong with you, dumb lad. I <laughs> don't. I shall go down, get some when I get back. Oh, that'll be getting a lot of money. When I get back, I'll oh, be getting a lot of money. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm not cracking jokes when someone's incredibly unwell, but as they're starting to feel better. Yeah, I like to have a, j a joke with patients and, and relatives. So, I'm going to start to give you some medication and get you nice and sleepy. Yeah. When we've done that, we're going to get this knee in a bit of a better position for you. Yeah. So you'll wake up, you'll come round with a plaster on your leg. Very good. All right. Yeah. You just breathe normal now, Jeff. Can I? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, breathe normally. <laughs> I know it's free, but save some for other people. That's enough now. <laughs> Back in Rhesus, Dr Buick adds a personal touch to calming his patient's nerves. So you're not sat in hospital being stared at by lots of people. You're on your favourite beach or your pub with your Guinness, whatever you'd like to choose. 79-year-old Jeffrey's fractured knee needs setting in plaster before being x-rayed. Because the skin is sort of te under tension there. And the worry is that the broken bone is sort of putting it under tension. So just to get it into a more normal alignment, getting around to x-ray and then see what we go from there. So it might be we have to rejiggle it again. At least it's the skin isn't under under threat. Jeffrey Jeffrey Hey up, Jeff. You're just waking up. Nice deep breaths. That's it. How's that feel? Alright, it's a bit more comfortable. Hi. Hi. 
They bring in a chaplain called Paul. Fine. He's 60. He's previously had a stroke. Okay. He was at a restaurant when he lost consciousness and suffered a cardiac arrest. Paramedics successfully restarted Paul's heart on the way to casualty. Ready, steady, move. The doctors first need to make sure he doesn't have another cardiac arrest. Oh. Hi. Just relax, relax. Put your head back and we'll, I'll, I'll lead right, on Okay. Oh, no. Don't worry, just relax, just relax. So it looks like you've had a cardiac arrest. So your heart stops beating. Alright. But it's beating again now. Alright, we need to find out why this has happened. Just have a quick listen to your chest as well, so alright? Dr. Sebastian Peter is now leading Paul's treatment. I was born in Romania. Most of my training has been in Ireland for the past three and a half years. And now I'm here. Let's discover you up there. The Yorkshire people are quite, quite welcoming and very, very nice. And I am envisioning myself as working here for probably ever. It's all in keeping with, with the With Paul when his heart stopped was his wife Yvonne and neighbour Beatrice. So, uh, uh, What's your understanding of what happened? We were in a cafe. Mm. It had his breakfast. Yeah. And then he just went into a daze. Oh. It was fine this morning. It was fine. We've just been married 30 years. So his heart did stop yeah. for, a, for a few minutes. We, mean, we did manage to restart it by giving him the shocks that the paramedics have administered to him. Now at the moment he's stable, which is good. We all do get emotional. I think it's part of our professionalism to hide that as best as we can, especially when we're, we're, we're in front of the patients and their families. They need us to be a rock, not someone who breaks down. Did you get all that? No. I'm going to repeat it for you, is that all right? So, what happened is when you were in the cafe earlier this morning, your heart stopped for some reason and you needed a few shocks oh. that the paramedics have administered you to get you back. Oh. The patient's relatives do show a lot of resilience, a lot of strength when they're dealing with uh, a family members that require urgent, immediate treatment to save their lives. But I don't think the family or Paul were realizing how, how close he was of dying. Do you have any questions for me? I know it's, it's, it's a lot to take in. It is. Um, and, and, and He's here and then he's all right. So that's, that's the take home message. Okay, thank you. Oh, no. Oh. Where are you? You're in hospital. Because oh. you weren't very well when we went out. All right. It's there. Oh. Where? Say the rope. Oh. Over in Resource Bay 2, Paul's X ray results have shown no broken ribs. Monitoring his progress is Sister Harriet Lindley. How did you meet? It's his wife. I'm just a neighbour. How did you meet Paul? His sister. Is a year older than me, and his brother were in the same class as me at school. Oh. <laughs> and my friend went out with one of his friends. How many years have you been married? Oh. Oh. How long have we been married? Oh. 30. Oh, he remembers. Down his points. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a very, very good memory. Whose birthday was it in November? Oh. How old were you? Oh. Wow. Where did you go for your birthday? Oh. On a cruise. Oh, On a cruise. cruise. Oh, I love cruising. Yeah. Have you got the cruise book? Yeah. <laughs> Although Paul has been responding well to treatment, 
Dr. Sadiq is concerned by his latest test results. Paul has already survived two major cardiovascular traumas, and now doctors fear they have found a clot in his blood. He'll need immediate treatment. In Resus Bay 2, Sister Rachel Sheard is treating Paul's latest setback. One of your blood tests has come up, come back a bit raised. That suggests you might or may or may not be a little bit of a clot. Uh -huh. So for us to treat that, we need to give you some medication. Yeah. But for us to get the right dose for you, I need to know how much you weigh. All right, so let's get you up. All right, you're gonna feel stiff as boots. Despite being disorientated, the fact that Paul can move himself is a good sign. How oh, we did, Lynn? Yeah. Right, just sit there. Just sit there and get your bearings. Hang on. Everyone in before you can walk. Just hold on there. Where are you going? No, I don't want you to sit on that chair yet. I want you to just sit on the trolley for now, please. This is some scales. All right, then, when you're ready. All right, try and sit still for me, Paul. Did the doctors explain this is quite normal? Shall we get you back on this truck? Oh, they are brilliant. It's a nice good job we've got in NHS service, isn't it? Over in Resus Bay 2, Paul is recovering well from his cardiac arrest. It's a relief for Yvonne and Beatrice. He still looks better, Yvonne, than what he did. Yeah. Oh, it's scary, isn't it? Oh, we shut Kathy down, didn't we? First time we've ever been there and all. <laughs> Humour is probably important for the families because all the initial seriousness of getting down to business and fi fixing a really, really sick patient turns into more of a humorous situation when they're getting better. It's probably a reassurance to them that things are looking for the best. It was funny that when I was holding his hand, didn't it? Yeah. All the side, and then he just said to me, where's my wallet? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's his, his thing, his money. <laughs> Yeah. He paid for breakfast anyway, so I could be paying anyway. <laughs> Bless him. Dr. Peter has got to the bottom of why Paul's chest pains had continued, and it was nothing to do with his heart. I suspect that the pain that you're feeling at the moment, especially given the fact that it's mostly when you take a deep breath in, is probably from the chest compressions during the resuscitation that the paramedics have given you. That, that caused a bit of trauma to your chest and a bit of a, the abdominal wall. It might be also the case that when, when they do CPR, they ventilate you in a balloon and mask. And when sometimes when sometimes happens is that a lot of that air doesn't necessarily go into your lungs, it can go into your stomach and gullets as well. So you can be sick after that. Just six hours since Paul collapsed in a cafe, his condition has improved dramatically. In Paul's case, the, the most striking thing of it was how well he was and how funny he was, despite the fact that probably not even an hour before arriving at the hospital, he had a cardiac arrest. When you're dealing with a really, really sick patient, that you feel that despite your best efforts, things are not going right and you know that the outcome is probably not going to be the best, when they rally and turn around, you cannot stop but be amazed. This is something that the books won't teach us, really. Paul was transferred to a cardiac ward where he had a stent fitted. Almost three weeks later, he was considered well enough to go home to his family. Paramedics have brought in a patient Dr Humphrey should recognise. For eight years, Ken worked at Barnsley Hospital as a security guard. Earlier this year, he had a stroke and his wife Valerie is concerned that it may have happened again. Are you all right? I am, you I'm not too bad, but you're not so good, are you? It's been way more than an hour. I've had, uh, All right. You, well, it's, it's, you're not going to be a bit... It's a bit warm, isn't it? 
you're not going to be able to tell me at the moment because no. your speech isn't quite right. Let me no, let me hear no. what you guys got to say. Yeah, but it just went well tonight. We didn't have to worry stroking or a seizure or were just... So when did you stop being security here? 2012. I thought I'd seen you around. <laughs> And that's why. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. We try and make sure that we give people the best treatment we can. You know, when it's staff, they're a little bit like your own family. This has always been weak, hasn't it? And you make sure that they're, they're treated with the respect that they, they've earned and deserve, really. So you had a stroke earlier in the year. Yeah. And did it take this arm yeah, this, and your leg? That one. Right. And how much of a recovery have you made from that well, stroke? Well, it's... Everything, it was, everything, there's an elephant, it's all right. Yeah, OK. Yeah, this yeah. is, it, 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 it doesn't help it. All right, it, OK. It more. A stroke can affect your speech because you cannot say the right words or the words that you're using are the wrong type of words. You can understand what people are saying to you, but you can't reply, and that is, it must be incredibly uh, distressing. What's this called? Scan. What's ben, Ben. A Ben, that's right, ben. OK, yes. And ben. what do you do with it? That's when you put it over, put it forward, isn't it? That there. Yes, what do you do with it? What's it called? Calvator, is what they call it. Right, OK, then. all right. The strokes that affect speech are really, really disabling for patients and really quite frightening and um, anxiety-provoking. Um, what's this? That's, that's a bankly, a bulbacu. Now, what we are going to need to do is you're going to need to go and have another scan of your brain, uh -huh. OK? Because you may have had a little bit more of a stroke, and that's why things are not quite right, OK? Yeah. And when the alarm break goes in... Yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of a difficulty understanding you at the moment, but, know, you know... I can't tell. Yeah, 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 all right. <laughs> Just try and relax. If Ken has had another stroke, there's just a four-hour window in which effective treatment can be given. Do you want to get a porter to take him round to uh, CT when uh, yeah. you've done whatever you need to do? While Ken is taken to CT as a priority, Dr Humphrey phones ahead. Julian Humphrey here. One of our old security guards has come in with a... He's had a stroke before, but he's come in with possibly an extension of his stroke. He's got a dis expressive dysphagia. See you later. Oh. Bye. Dr Humphrey waits for the scan results, he checks in on Ken. OK, we'll see what your scan shows. <laughs> I'll try and work out what you're saying by the time you leave. No promises, though. <laughs> Thank you. It's a very frustrating thing to have an expressive dysphagia like that, where you can't... You know what you want to say, but it's all coming out as gibberish. Ken's scan revealed he had suffered a seizure, a result of his previous stroke. After being monitored for a few hours, he was able to return home. He continues to suffer with speech difficulties and is being supported by his family. And another suspected heart attack patient has been rushed in by ambulance from a training session, 82-year-old Mick. Mick today has walked. How far do you say you walked, Mick? 16 hours. He's a race walker. He's a race walker. He's had a bit of a dizzy turn and fallen into a wall. Both his knees are very sore. And he was a little bit confused when we got there. I just collapsed and my knees hit this wall and got me out for a few seconds. It did, didn't it? You're on for a world record, did you say? Well, just a few seconds. Aww. Off the world record. Amazing. So, we've done an ECG for Mick. Yep. And we found a couple of anomalies that will need investigating. Thank you. I'm Marriott. I'm nurse looking after you. Let me do um, an ECG then while we're talking. I'm just going to lay you back a bit. Um, I'll just lift your T-shirt if you don't mind. Right, keep still for me. Sister Harriet doesn't want to miss any underlying issues. She's closely monitoring Mick's cardiac function. Mick, just keep nice and still for me. As his ECG was abnormal, Sister Harriet is testing his blood for markers that will indicate if he's had a heart attack. It's OK, my knees are hurting. 
Oh, I'm going to take some blood as well if that's all right. Now they must wait for his results. Okay. Sister Harriet is in the nurse's station. Vicky of triage, the most gorgeous 82 year old. <laughs> oh, bless him, what's she coming with? It's a um, world record setting marathon walker. And this morning he's walked 16 and a half miles, gone a bit dizzy, and then he's fallen and he's hurt his little knees. Oh. It's just a shame, I know, it's like, oh gosh. <laughs> I think my maximum was nine miles. That was my record on yeah, the ship. Yeah, miles. I don't step. The majority of nurses, if not all of them, uh, like to see how many steps that they've done in a shift. <laughs> we almost compare steps at the end of a shift to see who and have a joke about who's worked the hardest. <laughs> Hello, Mick. Sister Harriet's keeping a close eye on race walker Mick. Okay. As his heart trace was irregular. Are you sure? Yeah. They're waiting for his results, but today's events have taken their toll. What's the matter? I just feel a bit down, a lot down. Oh. What's happened today? It's going to get where my training. It's so close now. You've achieved so much, though, haven't you, sweetheart? Yeah. For a patient in a &E, it's quite a daunting and scary time for them. It's really important that we get them seen and treated but often it's it's just as important to just sit and talk to them. Um, sometimes that is therapy in itself. You know you've broke those records already. Yeah. You push yourself a bit too much today, haven't you? Yeah. You've so much to be proud of, haven't you? I want to get back training. Oh, bless you. I, I hope Mick achieves his record because there's not many people around like Mick. Tests later reveal Mick had had a heart attack. After surgery to fit a stent, he was feeling much better and as eager as ever to get back into training. Outside, and there's no let up in the weather conditions. Shall I get 10? I think we're going to get quite a run of it today, aren't we? What do you like today out there in the weather? Very, very, uh, it's smoggy. Um, driving conditions are quite reduced. Even though we've got lights on, I think they'll still find it difficult seeing us to move over to let us pass. So it's, uh, yeah. The fog not lifting at all? No, 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 it's uh, minus five as well at the minute. It's freezing. <laughs> so no, I need my gloves on. So, and bobbly hat. <laughs> so, yeah, but no, it's, it's, uh, it's not too good out there. Battling the icy weather to start her shift is advanced nurse practitioner Cheryl Barnes. When I arrived, there, were, there was a man who'd been running on the, yeah. on the road out here and he'd gone yeah. down twice as I'd seen him. It was quite funny. And, and he went down twice, got up and went, it's very slippy. And I thought, why are you running on ice? <laughs> he was. When you work in an emergency department, it does make you more aware of ice. I always think of elderly people that for some reason have to go in their greenhouse on a icy day and water plants, or take the bins out. You just don't want to be doing those things on an icy day. So what you've been doing them, falling over? Yeah. Falling down, flat on my back. I had the same this morning, going to Carlo, nine o'clock, straight over. Yeah. 90 year old Barbara lives alone, so today her neighbours are keeping an eye out for her. So Barbara went out to uh, bus me back in. She thought she were ballet dancing. Then she went to the garage. Then she went to green. Come out, and I thought, oh, I'll go out to some plants in greenhouse. Bang. I didn't know I were going down. And I come to an hour way through. <laughs> she thought it were raining. Yeah. So eventually she rolled my wife up and uh, put things in motion. <laughs> That's what neighbours are for. Barbara, are you, are you all right on your feet? Okay, we're going to go into that cubicle over there, okay? Are you together with this lady? Yeah. Do you want to come with me? You're very welcome. The ageing population now that we've got in Barnsley, they're really quite stoic and only come when they're proper sick. There we go. <laughs> and they'll say, you know, oh, I didn't want to put you out, you know, I know you're busy, and you think, yeah, but that's what we're here for. We're here for you, you know. We're here for exactly that. And my car, they all <laughs> covered in blood at back. Oh dear. So you've hit uh, your head good and hard then. So I, I've hit it hard because it hurts. Yeah. I particularly like 
seeing elderly patients. Um, I think it's an incredible position to be in. It makes me quite emotional because they are amazing. <clears throat> now then, has your tummy been okay? Yeah. Not had any pain in your tummy or anything? No. It's not tender? No. No? Fine. Have you had any problems with your bowels or your waterworks recently? Well, I always used to have to take something to go. Okay. Now I have to take something to stop. <laughs> You have some great conversations with patients and you have a real good giggle with them sometimes. It's brilliant. Great sense of humour and I love looking after people like that. It's a great feeling. So I think we could get away with gluing it, look, because it's just that bit there, look, when I've looked. So I'm just going to glue that together like that. Now you've got a lovely coloured hair. It's pink. It's a bit of a it's new a trend, nice. that one. <laughs> Do you I like a bit of blow up from? <laughs> Be wild. Do you live on your own? Yes. Okay, so when we've had a head injury like this, we need to have somebody with us for 24 hours. Yeah. Because obviously things can progress later. And if you're on your own, that can be a bit of a problem, can't it? Yeah. You okay, love? Yeah. Not hurting you, Emma? It's sealing off. It's fine. We need to decide who can be with you, yeah. okay? If, if there's nobody can be with you from now for 24 hours, what we'll do is we can, we can keep you here for a little while so we can organise that. I think, I think some we'll start with Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. That, okay. Okay, can you hang fire here a bit? Yeah. I just make sure that my neighbour is safe when it's really icy. Keeping an eye on each other like that, that's quite Barnsley, yeah. 84-year-old Terry fell in his kitchen and his wife Lydia called 999. So what happened? Dr Trimble will be treating him. I just started to move away from the sink. Mm-hmm. Pulled my left foot. It just gave way. It wasn't like you slipped in anything. I just went down and I heard a crack. OK. I'm just going to have a chat with my boss and we'll get this so it looks a bit better. All right? Yep. Won't be long. Consultant Dr Dave Walker and Dr Trimble need to straighten, then set the bone. Get off the key on the foot. You can turn it the same way. Yeah, just, just so the whole In a minute, I'm going to straighten this. I'll not lie to you. It will hurt a bit. See, if you take that, that will help. Very floppy. Just straightened it now. Yeah, it's quite. It's just quite unstable. Oh yeah, no, yeah. it's really. Because every every time it's like it's moving, it's just clicking. We need to put a plaster on because it won't stay like that if we let go. Okay. Sister Vicky breaks some bad news to Terry. We might have to cut your joggers off. Yeah. The Sheffield Wednesday ones as well. I know. Are you okay for me to cut them off? Yeah. I think you deserve a new period after this. Ashley will buy you some. <laughs> Terry's ankle is tightly secured with bandages and a temporary cast, while doctors investigate whether he needs surgery. You OK? That's as bad as it gets. Well done. OK. Terence, what did you used to do as a job? Musician. Musician? I worked all over the world. Glad to end up at home for the... Oh, yeah. Jim Mansfield, the film star. Yeah. Lydia and Terry have been married nearly 40 years and travelled the world together. They call it maestro. No, my... how do you say it? Maestro. Maestro. <laughs> Dr Trimble orders an X-ray to find out the severity of Terry's fracture he may require an operation to fix his ankle in place. I was stood at the kitchen sink yeah, yeah. and I turned to go away yeah. from it yeah. and my left ankle gave way oh, dear. and I went down and I heard a snap and I broke my leg. Simple as that. Oh, dear. That's your x-ray there. Oh my God. You can see the big crack down here. And yeah. a big split through there as well. That was the bit that was poking out the skin. Another bone, which is your fibula, 
that's fractured as well. So two fractures? Yeah, two fractures. It's obviously from the joint line, you can see it's very unstable. Dr Trimble calls in junior Dr Nick Sinanen from orthopaedics. Hi, sir. How are you doing? Very nice to meet you. And you? My name's Nick. So you've got something called an open fracture. I'm going to speak to my boss, but potentially you might have to go over to Sheffield. All right. And they're probably better equipped to deal with it than we okay. are. OK? All right. There is. Sheffield is 23 miles away. Are you OK? Sure. No, she's not. No. But listen, everything's going to be OK. All right. She's straight to my mind, I think I can't drive out of yeah. Listen, if you need to get over, I'm sure that they'll let you get in on with them and, and transfer and cross over with them. Yeah. And if you've got family, then they can fetch you back. Yeah. So, OK, don't worry about things like that. I'll get you a cup of tea and drink. All right, then. All right. So I spoke to the orthopedic consultant at the other end of the phone. Consultant Dr John Rayner has spoken to a colleague in Sheffield. She's keen to see you tonight, um, and if you need an operation, she's likely to have that in the morning. So yes. what we're going to do is move you to our little ward, CDU. When they ring us to say that you've got a bed over there, we'll send you over with an ambulance. Thank you, Bob, the hospital. That's all right. No problem. Thank you very much. OK. I don't know when going to wait for transport. That's just been booked, okay, so it can take up to four hours. Wow. All right. Lydia was able to go in the ambulance with Terry to Sheffield. He did need surgery the next day. It went well, and he's now recovering at home. But there's no let-up for the casualty team. A 64-year-old man is being rushed into recess. Dr Guinness is preparing to treat him. The hot weather has caused Melvin to have severe breathing difficulties. I had worked in Barnsley as a junior doctor um, quite a few times during my training and then when it came to picking a consultant job, uh, it was a bit of a no-brainer really. It was the only place I wanted to come and work. We're in a very privileged position to meet people at the most vulnerable. Right then, Melvin, just while you're having your blood test taken, I understand, so you suffer with your chest quite badly at home. Are you on oxygen normally at home? Yes. How much Thank do you, you have at home normally? It is on number two. All the time? Yes. Day and night? Yes. And then I'm gathering that things just got worse today, gradually? Yeah, I've just had enough, yeah. OK. Do you smoke? I'm not good. I didn't, I didn't uh, sleep a week last night. OK. So now, I'm, I'm just knackered. Fair enough. Do you smoke? No, I've stopped. When did you quit? Last time I came in hospital, day oh, before. Okay. A few months back. Well done. Worst, oh. worst thing anybody can do is start smoking. COPD is a chronic lung disease and people can find it really difficult to breathe sometimes when it flares up. It can be horribly scary, I think, that feeling where you just can't can't get your breath in and often can't get your breath out. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's a really horrible condition to have and people live with it for their lives. It's a lifelong condition once you've got it. I'll swap you onto this nebulizer. Melvin is being given medication to open up his lungs, which should ease his breathing. OK, it's going to go a bit misty now. Yeah. When that's gone through, I'm going to put you onto a different oxygen mask so that we control, we can control very carefully the amount of oxygen that you're getting, OK? Right. So that's on there. Melvin loves to chat, uh, and that's quite difficult when you're breathless. I know he's been very worried about his dog. Uh, he's left his dog behind. I think he's got the neighbour to sort that out. And, and that's generally really stressful, I think, when you're uh, having to come into hospital and leaving someone that depends on you behind. So I can understand that. Yeah, I weren't going to come in unless I got a to agree to look after it, Dad. Because last time I went in hospital, I'm going to stick it out for another day. And I told staff when I got in, and they said if I had it on, I might have died. So when I get here, I just let them do it up, just get on with it. Yeah, the great nurses. I love all the lot of them. Your oxygen levels at the moment are doing okay, but you're needing a lot of oxygen 
to keep them at that level. Each, each one's the, the yeah. level to put her up. And you're going to be stopping in with us in hospital? Mm, for a day for or two long. at least, I should think. What's down to said Valley? We're too weak. I hope it won't be that long this time. OK, let me go and arrange those things for you. We'll get this treatment Super. sorted and we'll see how you go, OK? Super. In Melvin's case, um, he could have come and seen us a little bit sooner, I reckon. I think many Barnsley folk think they're going to waste our time if they come into A&E with something and they tend to leave it a little bit too late uh, or later than we would like. So does Barnsley tap water taste nicer than any other water? Just about, yes. You can't be a Barnsley tap water. It's cold, that one, isn't it? It's <laughs> Three hours after being admitted into Rhesus, 64-year-old Melvin is still receiving treatment to get his breathing under control. <laughs> Dr Guinness has been monitoring Melvin's oxygen levels. Right then, Melvin, there's no punctured lung I can see on your X-ray. You certainly have got big lungs, as you told Long me. Lungs. Long lungs. I like that phrase. I've got a big heart, apparently. Ah, oh, the Barnsley people are fab. Um, yeah, they are very stoical bunch. Uh, you quite often only meet them towards, you know, a fairly dire stage of their illness. I think that's the Yorkshire grit. Now, have any one to the sandwich? And a cup of tea? Oh, yeah. Is anything you don't like on your sandwich? We've got ham, um, cheese, um, tuna mayonnaise, chicken mayonnaise. Um. Ham. Melvin, I've got no ham sandwiches, I'm afraid. We've only got tuna mayonnaise. Is that all right? It'll have to be, will Tuna mayonnaise, Christ. It's all right, tuna. I'll drink milk first. Thank you very much. You're all right. <laughs> right, shall I get your oxygen mask? I'll pop your nasal cannula on one. Lots of the elderly patients we meet say that they feel lonely. And I think that's a really hard place to be. And when they come into hospital, there's lots of noise, there's lots of action, there's people to chat to. I think that can be very reassuring. And especially when you're unwell, being in that kind of environment where there's lots of people around can be a very positive thing, actually, in terms of people getting better. Oh, straight out of bloody ice box, these. Bloody frozen. Eat that nice and quick for me, Alvin. Yeah, I want to get you back on your little. Do you want a break? Yeah. I've been like this now for months on end. All right. You just take that nice and steady, that breathing. I live on my own. Do you? And since I've been in and my breathing's picked up a bit, I've been talking my head off. And I love. And I. No, that's all right. That's, that's really, really living on my own. <laughs> Melvin's breathing is now stable, so he can be transferred to a ward to be treated by the respiratory team. It does feel good, I won't lie, when someone is really unwell and often just with some quite simple things that we do, they can be feeling so much better. And that feels good. I would say most of us are in the job because we enjoy making people feel better. Melvin was discharged a week later. Waiting to be seen in the ambulance cubicle is 81-year-old Larry, who's been brought in after a nasty fall at home. Larry, I'm Harriet. I'm one of the nurse looking after you. Assessing him today is Sister Harriet Lindley. What have you done today? I was going out to the back door with some uh, rubbish in each hand. Yep. And I've caught the uh, door frame with my foot and fallen. And because I got something in each hand, yep. I've just gone straight down onto the cobbles mm -hmm. and hit my head. Larry has come to hospital with his daughter Karen and wife Molly. 
he was trying to call me and I thought I don't like the way he's sounding. It's like, help, I'm, I'm doing something stupid again. It was just so silly what happened and that was it. I finished up on my face. When I went into the kitchen, he was stood over the sink and blood was just going everywhere, down the units and under the carpet. It's because he won't do as he's told, Harriet. <laughs> he's a very stubborn man. So no dizziness before you fell? No. Has he been fine, not been confused? No. I'm just annoyed. I'm not just normal, what I'm used to, you know. <laughs> when he doesn't hear me when I'm talking to him. <laughs> Are you allergic to anything? No. Allergic to my nagging, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> so have you had a few falls recently then? Twelve months ago, I fell in the bathroom and then ten days later when I was demonstrating to my family how the fall occurred, I did it again. I finished up with broke ribs. Oh, God. Larry, I'm going to go and get one of the doctors to come in just because you've had a head injury. All right. Just be one minute. Miriam, and one of the boxes. And have you been vomiting at all since? How did you meet him? I went to the, this wedding in the afternoon, and it turned out to be his best friend. Oh, gosh! <laughs> that I'd gone with. About seven o'clock, this guy walked through the lounge door, and I took a look at him and I thought, I'll have him. <laughs> It's true, it's I definitely have a soft spot for the older um, generation that we see in A&E. Anyone any medications that thin your blood at all? Clopidogrel. Oh, clopid, 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 clopid. <laughs> it's a bit clopid, of a mouthful, isn't it? Clopidogrel. I call okay. it clopidogrel. I say, what do I say? Clopidogrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to think about it. I really like to make a big effort to to stay with them and talk to them. We courted for two years, from 1957 to 1959, and then we got married, uh, and we've been married ever since. Aww. I've had him 60 years in December, but I'm not ready to let him go. Oh, it's, we're not at that. Oh, of course we will, yeah. I'm trying to keep up for him, but it's Aww. difficult. Don't In the ambulance cubicle, Dr Miriam Cox has finished her assessment of 81-year-old Larry after he took a tumble at home. Have you stood up and been able to walk since, do you think? Yes. Good news is, from what you've told me, it doesn't sound like there's any damage to the brain or inside the head. So there's no reason that I'd see that we'd have to do a scan of your head today. That eye looks all right, and the bones of your face feel all right too, okay? The yeah, eye looks all right. Mm-hmm. So, the only damage that I think has been done is I think you've broken that nose where you've fallen spat on it. So what we normally do is we let you go home and you book an appointment for in about 10 days' time, okay? Are you all right to go home? Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah, and then in about 10 days' time, when the swelling's gone down, a nose specialist can have a look at you and decide whether or not they actually think it's broken or not. Because you've only just arrived with us now, we'll keep you in for an hour or so and just keep an eye on you and make sure your blood pressure and everything's happy. But if everything stays nice and normal, then I'm happy to let you go home. Are you happy to go home? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Am I happy? <laughs> oh. So what I'll do is, I'll leave you with Harriet to clean you up slightly and I'll pop back in and see you in about an hour's time and we'll see about getting you home. Is that all right with you? Thank I'll you very much. I'll see you soon. All right. I'll just give your nose a quick clean. Sorry, did I press on a bit hard then? The nose might be broken. Yes, I'm, I'm keeping up, darling. It's all right, thank you. I think elderly patients worry more about coming into hospital. It must be hard for couples that have been together 
so many years to think that they're losing their soulmate. Who's going to bob this on your nose? We can put some on it if it doesn't stop bleeding. Yes. But hopefully it'll stop bleeding while he's here. No. Sorry. All right. Yes, <laughs> I think that's everything then. So, so let me see where, the, where we can bob you for now. Thank you, my darling. Steve, please will you move room two into 11? Right. Sure can, do Oh, yes. Don't, sorry, sweetheart. Oh, well, we can keep them as long as you like, darling. We don't mind. Larry's observation time has come to an end. Hello again, sir. Dr. Cox is back to see how he's feeling. How are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah. I still uh, feel uncomfortable right here. Okay. Let me just have one last listen to your chest. I think the pain in your eye is more likely because you've got so much swelling around there. So more than likely it'll just be the pressure and that'll take a few days for it to go away. We've just had another look at all of your numbers again and they're all absolutely perfect. And looking at your nose, it looks like the bleeding from that nostril there settled down nicely. All right, so I'm happy to let you go home if you feel ready to. Is that all right? Super. Any more concerns that you've thought of? Are you all right? When you have a heart attack, I said to him, yeah. you'll die when I give you permission. So the same principle <laughs> applies. I'm going to, I'm not going to give him permission, so he's got no choice. And it's your job to worry about him and look after him. All right. So, so as long as he's going to be all right, yeah. I, I don't mind. As best as I can check, there's nothing wrong inside his head. And it all is soft tissue and swelling here. But actually, you've got bones here, and then you've got quite a lot of air back here mm. before it gets to the brain. So it's a naturally made sort of cushion area anyway. So he's no deafer now than he was when he came in. Shouldn't imagine so. <laughs> should be fine. All right, and we're here. All right, anything changes, you're worried. If something's just not quite right, you can't quite put your finger on, we're only a phone call and an ambulance right away. All right, okay. so don't suffer at home. Absolute delight. Thank you. All right, Thank you. all the best. No, you're Thank very you. welcome. All right, sir. Does that make sense to you as well? All right, perfect. Pleasure to meet you. Hope I don't have to see you for a little while yet. All right, see you soon. Hello, Bouncy ED. How old? 68 year old man. Okay, yeah, we'll see you in recess shortly. Arriving by ambulance is a man who's struggling to breathe. Paramedics bring him straight to recess. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. 68 year old Ray already suffers from cancer. Last two hours, about a bit of difficulty in breathing in bed. Uh, he has been in quite a bit of pain with his back. Dr. K has come to assess him. Hello, sir. Hello. What's your name? Liam McPhee. Nice to meet you. My name's George. I'm one of the doctors. Who are these lovely people you've got with you? Stepdaughter. Stepdaughter. Nice to meet you all. What's brought you to see us today? I couldn't get my breath. He's not been well for a while. He's got a water infection. OK. So, and he's, he's just got worse. Fine. And apart from your prostate cancer, do you have any other medical problems at all, sir? Yeah. Diabetic. Yeah, Diabetic. Yeah. yeah. He's got a bit of cancer on his third and fourth rib, and he's okay. got a bit of cancer at the bottom of his spine as well. OK. So we'll have a little listen to this chest of yours, have a quick feed of this tummy, and then we'll go from there, OK? And then just take some nice deep breaths in and out. And out. And again. And out. And again. Any pains in your tummy at all? Down below. I think there's a couple of possibilities, really. Looking at your numbers and things, it does sound like you've got a bit of an infection going on because yeah. your temperature was quite high. Obviously, we know you've got a water infection. I think we should probably give you some antibiotics through this drip which we've got in, OK? And yeah. certainly, we're going to keep you in hospital. Yeah. OK. What, you're still going out? So, you'll probably be with us for a few days, oh. I would imagine. 
We're supposed to be going to Cyprus. Oh, Friday. dear. We have daughter's wedding. How long has it been planned for, the wedding? Uh, 18, 18 months. Yeah. 18 months, oh. year. At least once a week, I'd say, I get someone who's like, mm. I'm doing this tomorrow or the next day, and am I going to make it? Well, we hope it can go, but... I don't know. Obviously, we'll do our best. And I know it's a big thing that you don't want to miss, but we've also got to think about you, haven't we? If they're unwell and they need to come to hospital, then everyone's health should really trump everything. Um, but obviously, it's very difficult. The more concerning thing for me at the moment is your breathing. Because yeah. you're breathing quite quickly, and actually, you're on quite a lot of oxygen. We'll get you some antibiotics and, and see See you again after you've had your x-rays and see where we go from there. OK. In Rhesus Bay 2 is 74-year-old Michael, who's struggling to breathe. Nurse Cheryl is assessing him. So tell me from the beginning then, so you've had some shortness of breath and this cough that you've been up all night with. Michael's joined by his wife Lorna and daughter Donella. Let's have a little listen to your chest. Big breaths in and out for me then. Not want to say, can you phone the doctor or...? No. Mm -hmm. I knew then when he said, phone doctor, that yeah. something's not right. Never more. Never more. Never says he's poorly. Well, you're really crackly. <laughs> I'm just going to listen to your heart as well, OK? <coughs> <coughs> Right, we're going to get you some antibiotics, treat things early. OK, you want to make sure there's no infection there. I'm going to get a chest X-ray. Sounds like you've got crackles on both sides. I know you probably normally have, but it sounds worse to me. In Rhesus Bay 4, Ray's also struggling with breathing problems. He's come in with his partner Shirley and stepdaughter Sandra. It's just two days until his granddaughter's wedding in Cyprus. But she's been busy for the last few days. We wedding arrangements and then getting packed up and sorting bridesmaid dresses out, whatever you have. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it has been a nightmare. We'll get him there. <laughs> and then, hopefully. <laughs> Dr K is assessing his x-ray. So there's a little bit of fluid there, but there's no big area of infection that I can see or anything like that. Oh. Look at that, you behaved. And I didn't even make a mess. Oh. Can you believe it, Chloe? What? Didn't make a mess. I don't believe it. So your x-ray looks OK, and there's no big area of pneumonia that I can see, so it is probably just more likely the water infection, which has then tipped your breathing over the edge. So we'll need to keep you in to give you some antibiotics through this drip, and then see how we go. You're probably going to ask me how long, because I know you've got to go on Friday, haven't you? So. We normally keep people in until the temperatures are under control and obviously we're able to wean that oxygen off. Realistically, it's probably going to be a couple of days rather than just overnight. So I can't make any promises about Friday. Yeah. I know it'll be a lot nicer to be in sunny Cyprus than being stuck in, oh, yeah. stuck in cloudy England, hey? Hopefully we can get you there. Well, Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Ray's staying in recess. His temperature and oxygen dependence need to drop if he stands a chance of making the trip. It's been two hours since Ray was admitted to casualty with breathing difficulties. We'll, we'll, we look, we'll look after him. You know what we can do now, yeah. yeah. With the family wedding in Cyprus just 48 hours away, his stepdaughter and partner head home for some rest. See you later. Staff nurse Chloe Wesley is monitoring his progress. You stuck with me now, love. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just got a thank you. Can you believe it? It's nice, isn't it, when you do? It is. It happens surprisingly little, doesn't it? Yeah. And then sometimes, like, a little thank you is just really, yeah. like, a little pick-me-up. You think, all right, I'm doing something right. How are we feeling? Oh, yeah. yeah? You can't get lost and wander off now. Is that right? Yep, like a tag. 
Are you from Barnsley then? Yeah. Yeah? Been here all your life? Yeah. You poor soul. Yeah. I went on with Barnsley. You used to work at Pitt? Yeah. How many years did you do that? Well, I don't need a couple. Do we end up feeling them? I don't blame you. Ray's condition remains serious. He's a way off making the speedy recovery he needs. So, we're going to get you up to the ward. Bed's ready, and then you'll get seen by a doctor upstairs, OK? And then uh, your good lady should come and see you tomorrow. Operation clean up after doctor. I'll let him off because it's George. Hey, up, I've got a transfer from resource, please. Cheers. Bye. Ray was transferred to the hospital's acute medical unit, where he stayed for 10 days. See you later, darling. All the best. He was unable to make it to the wedding in Cyprus, but he attended a UK celebration a few weeks later. Another former miner, Michael, is having a chest X-ray. Heading his way is volunteer Jane, who's helping out with a tea round. Hello, love. Oh, well, we're bearing up a bit better state than what you're in yeah, at minute, aren't we? Yeah, we have to get through, haven't we? I said, these things here come to visit us on a Wednesday morning. I don't know. You've got nothing better to do? Yeah. So how many grandkids have you got? Two. Two? What are they called? They want them all. No, didn't you? Can't right? afford it. It's very expensive, isn't it, his grandkids? His, his granddaughters absolutely love him to bits just because he's daft. <laughs> he loves them to bits as well. Their fingers can work faster than mine have ever done in my life. Yeah, yeah but you know that in a few years' time they'll probably end up getting arthritis in the fingers because they've worked and that fast. And they're poorly claiming. Laughter does help. I do think it helps in some respects, along with medicine. We'll, we'll get medicine there, there due, obviously. Um, but I think humour is a big part of healing. You say it's quite warm now, don't you, love? Uh, somebody up near me. Somebody up near you. Well, what can I do? I'm, I'm red hot, aren't I? <laughs> I'll see you later, sweetheart. All right, darling. See you later. Do you want a cup of tea? You want a cup of Yeah. Two teas? Changing you again. Sorry. Not that hungry. <laughs> Well, in your face. No, I'm just trying to get this off. <laughs> you see your head? Mine's better than any other. Straighten this out. I've been doing this at eight o'clock this morning. <laughs> Not like a bit of banter, is there? No. Yeah. <laughs> in the kitchen, volunteer Jane's mixing up her own brand of medicine. You take a bag of biscuits for her. She's delivering to Rhesus, where Michael is awaiting the results of his chest X-ray. Are you allergic to anything? Women. Women. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So what's it like living with him, then? <laughs> and how long have you been married? Eh? 53 years. 53 years? Nurse Cheryl is comparing Michael's x ray to a previous image. So you can see his underlining problems with his chest. He's got all this nasty uh, fibrosis to his lung fields. The x ray reveals that Michael has pneumonia, an infection in his lung tissue. This doesn't look good, though, does it? Okay. Your numbers are a bit better anyway, aren't they now? That's good. So basically, we've done the X-ray, which showed that uh, Michael's got a right-sided pneumonia, OK, on top of his normal respiratory Chest, problems, yeah. is why, for the last six days, you've really started to struggle. Obviously, you're coming in today. You know that, don't you? Yeah. yeah I know that's obvious, but we, I like to tell you as well. We'll just keep monitoring them, see how it goes. Yeah. OK. Oh, yeah, I know you're not bothered. Well, this <laughs> Just explain no, us. Yeah, right. Of course you do, of course pneumonia. you do. Yeah. Then, yeah. Pneumonia see. is infection in one area of the lung field, yeah. Yeah, with the antibiotics is what we need, yeah. All right, uh, all right, no problem. Right, yeah. Michael is transferred to a ward for further treatment. It would be two weeks before he went home. 
In ambulance admissions, 84-year-old Jean has arrived. She's fallen down a flight of stone stairs. Watch your arm, here, Jean. Yeah, it's helping. Yeah. We're covering this gap so you don't fall yeah. through it. Yeah. Wait a bit. That's all right. right. I'll do it myself. Okay. Right. Come a bit further over. It's not a double bed. A little bit more, yeah. yeah. It's not a double bed. This bed. <laughs> You want first, <laughs> I know, I'm that fat. Oh, you're We went for Andrea at the stairs and missed, and we came down all ten of them. And it's quite a steep staircase, stone steps. I'm not dead yet, No, very much alive. Very, very much alive. And I ain't got to No. Starting his shift is one of the newest members of the team. Junior Doctor Jake Mullen. Yeah, they're an interesting bunch in Barnsley. Uh, a lot of characters. They can be difficult to understand. Jane, that's your all-inclusive band. We've got your double room, your sea view. <laughs> oh, that's good. Including breakfast. Oh, You're welcome. Oh, that's bless you, guys. Aren't I a lovely lady? Once you're back on your feet, I want to see a forward roll and a good dismount. Okay. All right. I'll do that. I'll be back. Uh, be back, please be back. <laughs> See you later, sweetheart. Okay, love. Well, I forget the name. <laughs> Jean is junior Dr. Jake Mullen's first patient of the day. You go from having no responsibility to even just small bits of responsibility become terrifying. I think I wrote my first prescription of paracetamol and my hand wouldn't stop shaking. I was so worried I was going to mess it up somehow. So, yeah, it's it a scary job. What's your name? Jake. I'm one of the doctors. I know, yeah. What's happened? Why, what's brought you to Amy? It's a long story. Are you prepared to listen? Of course I am, yeah. Oh, well, there you go then. You were on the stairs? Yeah. And wh whereabouts on the stairs? At the top. At the top. Right at top. And what happened then? I grabbed a hot rail to stop me from falling. Yeah. But I went. Did you? I did. Look. All the way to the bottom? I, all the way to the bottom. I do tiles. And they were as hard as iron. And you hit your head on them? Uh, more than that. More than that. <laughs> Do you remember falling? Oh, just like my life flashing before me. I didn't think I'd be alive when I got to the bottom. But I was. Somebody up there likes me. You're far too cheerful to be an A&E. My dad was always pretty caring growing up. Uh, he's not a doctor, but I think he wishes he always was. So uh, I, always, I always sort of felt that push towards it in a, lot, in a lot of ways. I think you could say my dad inspired me to be a doctor. I uh, just don't tell him. Mm. Can I just have a quick feel down here? Just make you sure... Can just... feel where you want. All right, thank as long you. As you can make me better. OK. So tell me when it starts to hurt, OK? Can you do that for me? It hurts. I do all the exercises, you know, what they tell you up, tell me. What do they call him? Oh, same bolt. Can you lift them above your head? Yeah. Oh, grand. Can you put your arms down? Yes. Yeah, Let me have a quick feel of your tummy. Yeah. Oh, I want to pee. <laughs> I entered a drink, you see. We'll get you to the toilet in a second. <gasps> oh, that hurts. Where, whereabouts? That muscle. That, oh, that muscle. Oh, I'm that big toe. Oh. Wiggle your toes for me. Just wiggle wi all of them. <laughs> um, I've got flat feet. <laughs> I want to live to be 150, but like Abraham. <laughs> All right, put your hands up like you're going to box me. All right, I'm going to pull your arm. I want you to stop me. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, and st same with this hand. Oh, oh, that's painful. Shrug your shoulders for me, like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's Stick easy. your tongue out and follow my finger. OK, fine. If I have an elderly patient, sometimes I try and picture them that they're my gran. I need to try and figure out what we need to get x-rays and images of, OK? Because you've obviously given yourself a big old knot. I am. So I'm going to have a chat with my team, have a think about it, write a few notes, yeah. and I'll get back to you and I'll let you know, OK? I'll be right back then, Jean, all right? Okay, no. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Very much, Doctor. You're a pleasure to meet you. When examining patients, junior doctors often seek advice from their senior colleagues. Junior Dr Mullen turns to consultant doctor Barath Reddy. 
I'm really just trying to fi figure out which parts of the body to image because she's sort of older and she's got a lot of arthritis. It's really hard to tell what's new and what's old. I was thinking just because of the mechanism and she's had a difficulty mobilizing, I wanted to do a pelvis regardless. Also her foot as well looks, her toes are quite bruised. I was going to okay. Okay. All right, I'll push you around to x-ray. Occasionally you get a patient who's just really sweet and really personable and it's a pleasure. It brightens your day when you can come across someone like Jean. Junior Dr Mullen is concerned she may have broken some bones when she fell. I don't think you've broken anything. Oh, isn't that good news? It is good news, yeah. Now, I know you were struggling to get about at home, weren't you? Well, yeah. So I think the best thing for you would be if we get you onto our short stay ward and we get you a bit of physiotherapy, a bit of occupational therapy tonight or tomorrow. Tonight? Yeah, we'll get you to stop in tonight or tomorrow. Oh, well, that's fine. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. and hopefully we'll get you off tomorrow, all right? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know I'm happy to be able to get Lovely. something done. There are some days when you know that you've made a difference to someone's life and a lot of the time they're really, really thankful for that and um, there's no better feeling, really. Lovely to meet you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Four hours after arriving, Jean is transferred to the short stay ward where she'll receive physio to help her get back on her feet. In resus bay two is 85-year-old Pearl. She was rushed in by ambulance, fighting for breath. Right, can I have a little listen to your chest and things? Is that all right? Feel free. Treating her are Dr K and Nurse Kim Gibson. I'm just going to borrow your hands first of all. I'm just going to have a quick feed of your pulses. Your heart's racing a little bit, isn't it? I don't feel as breathless. That's good. Right then, should we get some bloods off you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Much to give. I need to get your no, chest no. area. Is that all right? What the bloody hell? Oh, it's all my bits and bobs. Let's get your junction here. Yeah. Why is all over? Hey, and what would we do without you? That's it. I'm mean, a grumble about the health service, but what would we do without her? So I'm just going to borrow this little vein here, if that's okay. Don't worry, I'm not going to get you. No, there's not much to see. <laughs> I'm like mine, Anna. I'm only a shadow of the person I used to be. <laughs> hey, laughing. That's what me Anna thought, yeah. I used to miss out door girl at Pontins. Did you? Yeah. So, listening to your chest and with you having the cough that you have, I think you've got a chest infection or a pneumonia. Yeah. I so, understand. I've done some special blood tests here to see if we get any bugs that grow in your blood. Okay. Better not be. Well, exactly. So we're going to give you some antibiotics and some fluids now. You're obviously needing a bit of oxygen and we'll get an x-ray of your chest while you're in here as well. You'll be staying in hospital today, I'm afraid. You'll probably be with us for a few days. Oh, no. I know. No. But we need to get you sorted, don't we? What about my cat? Palmer. I'm afraid we need to look after you, don't we? Because if we don't look after you, you well, you'll not be in a position. Will. You won't be able to look after Homer either, will you? No. So we need to get you sorted. Joe, what are you here for? <gasps> I'll leave you with it. All right. <laughs> so who are these gentlemen you've got with you? That's my son, Robert. Yep. Oh, fine, nice to meet you both. My name's George, I'm one of the A&E doctors, all right. So, um, I was just coming back to speak to you about your blood tests and your x-ray, if that's right. okay. Yeah. So, um, your blood tests show you've got an infection. Right. We knew that anyway. Okay. Yeah. Your x-ray shows you probably do have a patch of infection on this right-hand side yeah, where I your crackles were. Something untoward, really. uh, chest infection and pneumonia are the same thing. One we just see on an x-ray and one we don't. Right. So, the treatment's the same, treated, I know. Treated yeah. the same. Yeah. Antibiotics. So we just need to get you up onto the ward. As a general rule... Yeah, it's safer to be in the life. You, so you need to stay in because yeah. your heart's still racing yeah. and, you're needing, and you're needing oxygen. Yes. So I can't let you go home if you're needing oxygen. She's obviously told me she's a smoker. Yes, yeah. I'm surprised that the doctor hasn't told you at your age you should know better. 
I've already smoke. done that. Yeah. Yeah. We've already told you off, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. It's not about quantity of life, it's about quality, isn't it? No, no. Is it? Smoke oh. the, the smoking affects the quality. Well, yeah, that's true. You don't want to be in here every month, do you? Eventually, the quantity as well. Because that's what we see with a lot of people that have been smoking all their life. They're in kind of every two, three, four weeks. And I would argue that probably isn't a good quality of life. But got an infection. Yes, we know you have pneumonia. But actually, you're looking better than when you first came in, which is good. Okay. I'll, feel a, I'll feel a bit better. Good. I felt terrible. After 10 days on a ward, Pearl was well enough to go home and was reunited with her much loved Moggy, Homer. Right, okay, there's an ambulance coming in, it's two minutes away. Uh, 81 year old male, multiple fractures. He's fallen while taking his dogs out. Morning, I'm Dr. Humphrey. Ryan, you're not going to be walking around at the moment, are you? Yeah. So we're going to take you somewhere else and we're going to uh, put this ankle straight because right. uh, I don't like the colour of your foot. Okay. Right. Uh, and it's a little bit bent. What dog was you walking? Uh, Gabe Charles okay. in the street, so. Right, okay. That reminds me of a joke. <laughs> which I will uh, <laughs> which I will tell later on. 81-year-old Brian is moved to recess for emergency treatment. I do find some things humorous. Um, I haven't got a a, a darkly black sense of humour, but I think I can try and relax people with, you know, perhaps comments that will make them smile or, or laugh. Let's put the lights on. How on earth did you get back home? Uh, two police officers lifted me up. And took you home? No, yeah, yeah. only across the road. All oh, right, later. OK. And where, where are the dogs? Each one of them took it back to house. The dog took itself back to the no, house. No, one of the police officers. All oh, right, OK. Look at the colour of that foot compared yeah, to the other one. Way, yeah, so I couldn't really feel the pulse in, that, in the top of that foot. I'm concerned that the foot hasn't got a good blood supply. It's looking a little bit mottled and cold. We need to correct that. One of the things we love about emergency medicine is actually doing a procedure that puts something that is clearly out of shape, back into the right shape. Reductions of joints, fractures, anything that goes crunch. <laughs> have, have you pulled many ankles before? Right, OK. Yeah, I in one yeah. so the first, first thing you want to do is grab hold of the, cal um, the calcaneum, the heel, and just pull it, all right? Pull it down, OK? That should disimpact it. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to give them high flow and then just monitor CO2. Yeah. yeah. So this has got oxygen going in. Yeah. Okay. That's just going to sit underneath your nose. Chris is going to make you a little bit sleepy. While you're sleepy, we're going to be pulling your ankle straight. Right. When you come round, your ankle, uh, your leg will be in a plaster. All right. All right. How much pain have you got at the moment? Not a lot. It's just. Tingly. Just tingly. Yeah. Right, OK. Have you got anything you want to ask me? Becky! No, OK. Who's putting the cannula in? So, Brian, yeah. I'm going to give you a couple of different medicines, OK? Right. First one's going to make you feel a little bit strange. You might even see things. All right. <laughs> All right. Just relax, go with it. All right? I'll we'll wait till uh, he's nice and sleepy. Just try and keep your eyes open for me. Feeds away with the fairies at the moment. In recess bay three, Brian's sedative has taken effect. Right, let's take that out first. That's it. And just bring this up a little bit. Yep. OK, so if you grab hold of the foot, you can give it a good... Pull, pull, pull. That's it. See what I mean? Right, OK. A bit, a bit more traction, that's it. Good, OK. Now, a lot of the time, they, they, the junior doctors will be fighting to do it. And the other thing is they need experience in doing these things. People will come and watch. If they hear that something is going on, they, you know, you'll get the odd... Ooh. You feel that pulse now. Just 
just move the ankle up and down now, just to see what sort of movement you've got there. When Claire puts the plaster on now, we're going to be putting it back into that position, OK? Need, OK, so just relax. Yeah. So just relax now, hold, hold it here. So you can see why, why this needed reducing, so the blood supply is going straight back into the foot, isn't it? Yep. And then we can manipulate it again afterwards, just gently. That's the reason for doing this straight away rather than sending him around for an x-ray, just to restore the blood supply. Very good. And that's how you do it, essentially. OK. How are you feeling? OK. Do you remember any of that? I like being in just the look space. <laughs> <laughs> Job's all done. Right. All right, so you just sit Thank back you. and relax, all right? Bless him. We tend to use ketamine in these situations. One of the problems with it is, though, that when patients start to come round after the procedure, they will hallucinate. It is quite entertaining, but, you know, you, you don't want to be laughing too, too much at it. I usually say, where's the money? Anything you want to ask? No. Nope. No, all right. Just uh, relax and have five minutes if you need it, OK? Right. And I'll see you Thank when you've you. had your X-ray done. Thank you. So he's fractured his ankle in three places. Fractured it there, there, both sides and at the back. Just explain that to him. Right, your ankle is fractured in three yeah, places, yeah. OK? And um, normally when that happens, you, you don't get away with without an operation. So what will happen now is that one of the orthopaedic doctors will come and see you and arrange for you to go to the ward. You said you weren't in any pain, didn't you? No, I'm not. Uh, you were walking a shit zoo. Did it pull you away then or something? Yeah, he went. Yes, yeah, and yeah. And I tried to pull him back, but we were on a bit of a slope. Yeah, and down you went. And down I went. Anyway, have you ever been to Barnsley Zoo? No. But it's not a very good zoo. There's only one animal in it. It's a dog. Do you know what sort of dog it is? No. It's a shit zoo. Shit <laughs> <laughs> so, no okay. questions then. Right, you can book an orthopaedic bed. Right, Fine. good. Thank you.